Hi everyone, I have a quick update on the plane. Um, as you can see, it's sitting on landing gear now. Um, I had hoped to move the plane out of the barn like I normally do to film videos, but unfortunately it's grown so large that I can't actually remove it right now. So I'm really sorry about that, and please pardon all the junk that's in here. Originally, the SE-5A used a tail skid, which would have made it pretty much impossible to operate off of pavement. I decided that that's a capability that I really need to have, so I went ahead and changed it to a tail wheel. This is probably the most important change that I've made to the landing gear. Um, since I've made this change, I'll also need to add brakes. On the original SC5A, the tail skid dragging in the dirt was the brakes, so I'll need to add some conventional brakes now that I don't have a tail skid. One thing that you've probably noticed is that, unlike most tail draggers, the SE5A uses a compression spring instead of leaf springs, which is a little weird. Um, originally, the SE5A actually had two springs, but I'm using an ATV shock. Um, I was unable to find out what the spring rate of the original springs were, uh, but the cross-sectional area of this spring is almost identical to the two originals, so um, hopefully it's pretty close. The tail wheel itself uh, weighs about 1.5 pounds. At first I thought this was way too heavy, but I looked up a conventional, uh, or a, a certified wheel of the same size, and it was actually heavier, so I guess this is acceptable. It's uh, 6 inches in diameter and 2 inches wide, so hopefully I won't have any sinking problems. Uh, one thing that's really unusual about the SE5A's uh, tail skid is that it was actually steerable, which gave the SE5A really pleasant ground handling in comparison to other World War I planes. When I was building the tail wheel, I was really nervous that the spring right was wrong, but fortunately, now that I have it together, I think it's just about perfect. With really light loads, like me just pushing on it, um, it has a pretty decent amount of travel. And even with heavy loads, like when I stand on it, um, it also has a good amount of travel, but it's not even close to bottoming out. So I think this is just about perfect. As I bet many of you have noticed, my landing gear is made out of tube steel, whereas most SE5As have wooden landing gear. This isn't entirely inaccurate, as many early SE5As did have tube steel landing gear. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I chose to go with steel. The biggest reason is that uh, the wooden landing gear used very large pieces of ash that needs to be straight grained. Finding usable wood would have been rather difficult and expensive. Um, the other reason is that I'm pretty sure this is lighter. Um, the early tube steel landing gear had a lot of issues. It was prone to collapsing, which is really bad. Um, and if I remember correctly, it was also placed in the wrong location on the fuselage and contributed to lots of tipping. Um, even if I had wanted to replicate this horrible landing gear, I wouldn't have been able to, um, as I couldn't find much information about it. So this is quite a bit different. Um, I made it to the same dimensions as the wooden landing gear, so in functionality it should be the same as the wood landing gear. Um, the tubing thickness I copied from the Fokker D7, so it shouldn't have the collapsing problem that the early landing gear had. Disappointingly, there's no wheels, tires, axle, or brakes yet, and the reason for that is the wheels and tires will be a rather large purchase, so I'm going to go ahead and hold off on buying those uh, for a little while. What I'm planning to do is use Harley-Davidson rims, uh, which have been used on a bunch of other replicas, so they're quite proven. Um, I found some that, uh, a combination that has an outside diameter of uh, 28 inches, which is just about perfect. That's very close to the original. Uh, so that's what I'm planning to do eventually. Another change that I've made to the plane recently that isn't really landing gear related is adding this compression member right here. Um, if a failure is to somehow happen in the fuselage, I bet it'll be uh, during landing and probably in this cell right here um, because that's where the joint in the fuselage is, right, right in the middle. Um, this compression member is only about a pound or maybe two pounds, but it adds a ton of strength. And relative to its weight, which is pretty insignificant, it adds a ton of peace of mind and security, so I'm very happy that I ended up adding this. It makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> 
Another thing that I've done recently is weigh the plane. Everything I have currently weighs about 220 pounds. Unfortunately, my plans don't say how much it's supposed to weigh at this stage. All I know for certain is that an original had an empty weight of 1,450 pounds. If I use rough estimates for how much the rest of the plane is going to weigh, it looks like I am definitely on track to meet the stock empty weight, which is very relieving. I'm really excited to have the plane up on landing gear, and I'm looking forward to moving on to my next project. I think what I'm going to try to accomplish next is building the ribs for the horizontal stabilizer, and I might even be able to put the stabilizer itself together. It'll be really great to have that done, because then I can install the elevators and it'll look even more like an airplane. Thank you so much for watching!